What's crack a lacking mother trucker? Yo. Yo. Professor Violence and Sleepless Sharp making picks today. Coming up, we got UFC Fight Night Vera versus Sandhagen. But before that, John, how you living today? Large and in charge. Large. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, loving it. Um, McDonald's style. We <laughs> got. We got some um, welcome back, um, guys. This time, every time, like, share, comment, subscribe. We rebranded under the Mood Swing Network. Um, we have full length descriptions, breakdowns now for you. We have some shorts out there. If you want to hit us up, email us. Um, all of our, our regulars got, got Jack Shore round two last week, plus 450. That was a nice little. Sweet little come up um, oh, round two, yeah, plus eight fifty round three. I was hoping it went on because that fight was not going past. That fight was not going the scorecards, um, nice. but yeah, we got we got there on that. Um, in our shorts, I know we gave out underdogs um, for the main card, and you know Justin Justin Gaethje got there. Um, Roman Delize might have gotten robbed. I don't know, but he fought really well. And Brian Barbera was in the robbery, and I think he looked terrible. Oh, you think it wasn't a robbery? Absolutely not. Marvin Vittori won that fight clearly. A robbery is like when you How? can't How? Just... Ro Roman Delize was minus 800 with a, two minutes to go in the third round for the fight. And he was the favorite after the first I round. Which, which nothing. That's, blad that's with, the most ridiculous statement ever. With regards to what's actually happening, no. How many people that gamble actually understand fighting? Five percent, right? Like if that, if that, man, you're one, you're a fucking unicorn. Well, in your defense, I bet Roman to lead it, and I wanted Roman to win, but I did not buy into the minus eight hundred. I was like, mm, I don't feel he's minus eight hundred. That means like he's winning this fight comfortably. <laughs> I was like, I think he's winning. He definitely won the first round. I don't think he won the second, which he didn't. And he was winning the third round, in my opinion. He landed all the big shots. But I thought there was a chance he was going to knock Marvin out. Like, mm. watching it as it was, oh. not going into it. Watching it in the moment. Oh, I was like, oh, you might knock Marvin Vittori out. But Marvin Vittori was winning that fight every other, like, other than those moments where it was like a big momentous swing, Marvin Vittori was winning. Like he outlanded him. He outlanded him by like thirty yeah. percent. No, he outlanded. Yeah, he outlanded him, and the, the leg kicks were. Um, let me turn this down for the background. And like, I can't believe there was one takedown attempt total. Like that's why it was disappointing. I wasn't too shocked in that. Uh, yeah. I wasn't too shocked at that. Um, um, right. that John, was, what's your hidden gem of the week? Yeah, we got UFC San Antonio. We're going to have a crowd. There'll be a crowd in the stands again. Um, and then it's a week off. Um, hidden gem, as, as of now, sticks out to me. I, I got to go with, I, I kind of like Daniel Pineda plus 200. Um, Daniel Pineda, you know, 41 pro fights. The guy's, guy's always there. Um, he's really good. Um, Awesome early, awesome early in the awesome early in the fight. First round monster. Um, what's his problem? Is I mean he can't get hit anymore. Um, can't get hit and gets finished. I don't know if he has to worry about that against Tucker Lutz. Um, Tucker Lutz, fourteen pro fights, twelve and two. Hasn't finished anyone from strikes in over three years. And uh, he can't get hit. Cub Swanson and him went to war, and he was beating Cub. Uh, yeah, he got knocked out. Yeah, but like, <laughs> Swanson. So I mean, Pineda's got Pineda's. Got, yeah, I mean that's that is that could be who. Cub Swanson's got twelve knockouts. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's you know, um, when he loses, he got knocked out three times. He loses by finish. Let's see. Thing. Uh, oh, yeah. He's been submitted six times. But he's got five decisions, too. He's never won. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. He's never won a decision. 
That's really what you're talking about here. Yeah, maybe I should it's rephrase. Like it's finished. It's that he can't win a decision. Yeah. Um, right. If he if he doesn't if he doesn't get finished, um, yeah. he he's going to run into cardio issues. Um, his style is very come forward and very. Uh, I mean, he's 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 just he's he, he likes now, to get it going. Really ragged. ragged. Mm. As I'm telling you, that dude, I outweighed that guy by fifty pounds, and he ran me fucking ragged. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, two weeks later, he got called up to the UFC, and I was like, "Oh, that makes sense." <laughs> yeah, makes um, sense. small world, but yeah. So yeah. yeah, Professor actually sparred against Daniel Pineda, and Daniel Pineda put gave him the gave him the business. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Tucker Lutz. I mean, he's a decision machine, and we last seen him. Um, you know, he got. Getting worked by Pat Sabatini. The fight before that, he had a good fight, good win over Kevin Aguilar. Um, he definitely lost, I think, the first one of the rounds in that fight. Uh, but he came back, and that was a, a strike. You know, that ended up being a fight played out in the feet, and he won the fight. But I think Pineda's a, this veterans, man. I don't know, like these these guys with not many fights against these veterans, like look, almost ten years a senior, and God, he's got almost like thirty more fights. Uh, I don't know, he's stepping up on here. Tucker Lutz hasn't been in the cage in over a year. They've both been out of the cage for a while, but I don't know. I think Daniel Pineda is a pretty good value, plus 200. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, Tucker Lutz, his only UFC victory is over a guy who has – Kevin Aguilar has only beat – has lost to – lost four UFC fights and won two of them. And, like, Rick Glenn's a pretty good fighter. Um mm -hmm. I don't know a ton about Enrique Barzola, but those are – He's good. Guys. He still fights in Bellator. He's, he's good. Okay. Those are – like, that's 2018 and 2019 that he had those wins, and then he's lost four fights in a row. So, I don't know, man. Like, Daniel Pineda looks really – has looked really good to me. He looked good in the Cubs Swanson fight, even though he got finished. I think he looked good. Um he beat up Herbert Burns. Is that the one where Herbert Burns just like quit? Yeah. Um, looks like he was doing pretty well in PFL as well. Like, man, that I I can't believe that line. Really, like, there's no reason for a for a plus, for Pena to be two plus two hundred. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good betting value. So yeah, that's right away. That's a first gem, I think, of this uh, gem of this All week. Right. So main card, guy. Main card is going to give you six fights. Um, six for the main card. Six fights with a full crowd, like we said. So it's going to be still going to be exciting, even and it's not a pay per view. Um, we got Albert Durayev against Chidi Bang Bang and Jukwani. Josh, I see Cheedy is minus 200 over Albert. What do you think? Initial reaction. So, uh, Duraev, du, uh, minus 200 makes me think that Duraev is being overlooked. Mm. Right? But then I think, okay, Cheedy Bang Bang has looked really, really good. He's been finishing people like lickety split. Ooh, yeah. wait, actually, his last fight was a loss against Gregory Rodriguez. Yeah. And then I look, oh, all right, okay, so he got to the UFC, but he, like, flash finished people right away. Who were they? Oh. Oh, they were just guys? Oh, and then as soon as he had a step up, he, like, it didn't go his way. No. That's problematic. Uh, okay, so let's go into look, we'll look at Albert Dryam. 15 and 4. All right. This guy's pretty good. He's Russian, training in Vegas. Means he's probably at Extreme Couture, maybe Syndicate. So you know he's going to be well trained. Uh, he's 8 0 in ACB. That's a pretty big uh, championship, uh, pretty big promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, beat Roman Kopilov. That's pretty good. Looks terrible against Joaquin Buckley. Mm, man, I don't know. Mm. Like, I don't know. Joaquin Buckley is just a guy. Like, he's a good guy, but he's just a guy. 
Yeah, I, I like. Well, I thought. I mean, I thought Joaquin fought really well that night. Um, he did what he had to do to win that, win that fight, and he really. Um, the damage was. Yeah, he, um, Darius couldn't continue because his eye was fucked. Um, yeah. So, man, I'm. But he couldn't Ryan. take. Um, Buckley's been working on that takedown defense. Like he couldn't keep Buckley down. Um, Buckley kept getting back to his feet. And then eventually he just starts stuffing takedowns and lighting up um, Darius. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess that's the game plan. I don't know if Darius is wrestle heavy or not, but he's got a six inch reach disadvantage here. Uh, yeah, he's pretty wrestle heavy he's against the striker. Okay, so that's got to be the plan then. He's going to try to get this down because he's not going to be able to compete on the feet. Definitely. Uh, he lands three strikes per minute, gets hit two and a half. That's a problem. Oh, wow. Nice He's really low volume. Cheese. No, that's pretty normal. High twos is normal. It's standard. Three. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> 72% accuracy for Chitty Bang Bang. That's ludicrously high. 50 is good. 55 is great. I've never seen 76, 72. Um, across four fights, that's super impressive. He's got... Pretty good takedown defense. That being said, he wasn't tested against anybody with like elite takedowns. Mm-hmm. Um, Jariah whiffs on a lot of takedowns. He's only got twenty one percent accuracy, but that likely means he's a chain wrestler kind of guy. And we get when he gets on the on the ground, he's looking for submissions. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be a little bit worrisome. Let me keep ooh, against copy lobby three. 50 ground strikes in five minutes. That's a lot. Uh, on the Contender Series, he only threw two. And he threw zero against Buckley, even though he had two minutes. <clears throat> Man, 50 ground, 50 strikes in ten minute, in five minutes is a lot. I like the land. Uh, she might just knock him out. Just like the other guys, he might flash knock him out. Otherwise, this is going to be a rough night for Chidi. He's going to get taken down. He's going to get beat up. He might get submitted. I he like that. I, I, like would that. Bet, I would bet on a finish. I would yeah. bet on a fighter. I like that. You might get plus money on the thing. But if you can, you can bet on Chidi by finish, which should be some plus money if he's only – he's minus 190. But Dariah, just to win the fight, is like plus. So if you can get plus money on both of those, yeah, I like those bets. That's They're likely – Outcomes. That's that's true. Um, I'm gonna go with Drive after what we what you said. I'm gonna. I think Drive. Drive. I think I think I feel cheating. I feel comfortable with that. Although I would have would have liked to have Drive in this because he's the grappler. But like, Cheaty has a definitely has a path to victory. Right. All right. Alex Perez versus Manal Cop. I'm a star boy. Harry, he's hey, back. Uh, Alex Perez's foundational style is foundational style. I believe it's jujitsu. Yeah. I was under the impression it was wrestling. It might be. Right? He loses all of his victories are on the ground, or his losses are on the ground. Yeah, every single one. I was gonna say his last couple performances are pretty weak. Um, Submission loss, pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, first round submission loss to Pantoja, first round submission loss to Figueredo. He's got a first round ground and pound loss to Benavidez, a first round armbar loss to Jared whatever in some other promotion. In that same promotion, uh, he has a, a second round submission to a, a guillotine. They call it a prayer joke, but that's just it's a high level guillotine, whatever. And then he's got another first round guillotine back in 2011. Like, there's a pretty clear way to beat Alex Perez. And I think that's true of most of the Team Oyama fighters. I, I don't know who does jiu-jitsu at Team Oyama, uh, but I've never, been, I've never been impressed by a Team Oyama fighter on the ground. Uh, Brent Primus is actually pretty good on the ground. Uh, that being said, 
<clears throat> can Model Cop take down Alex Perez? What do you think? Yeah, if he wants to take him down, yeah. Model Cop's a powerhouse. Um, I was, I was, I mean, he lost. He lost a tough one against. You know, he lost against Pantoja, but he went to distance. Um, he was still a big prospect because he was favored in a lot of fights. He lost a tough split decision to Mateus Nicolau. It could have went either way. And then he jumped back. Um, he caught O'Day, knocked out O'Day, knocked out Zalgas. Um, and he, David Dvorak was tough that day. Um, he, this was only, yeah, this was two months ago. Um, but Manel Cop almost finished that fight twice, but Manel Cop was beating him up. Um, Manel Cop's pretty powerful for uh for a fly, he's a flyweight, right? I think, yeah, he's a flyweight. No, one twenty-five. Yeah, he's a power, he's a powerful, definitely a powerful guy. Um, fast strikes. Um, I don't, I don't think Alex Perez can take him down. And if he can, I don't think he can hold him down. Um, and cop seems like he gets up. Pretty, his getup game is really good. Um, I don't know. And I, Manel cop has a pretty good. Pretty good game um, if you try to shoot on him. His takedown defense is pretty good. I've seen him threaten, like, front chokes. Um, Just to make you react, you have to respect it. Um, And he uses that to either either try to reshoot, take you down, or separate the distance again and go back to striking. Um, The only only person that he has taken down – in the UFC was Alice Alishanje Pratoja, who wouldn't even have bothered to stop it. Like mm-hmm. that's exactly what he would have wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's never shot a takedown against any other opponent at all. Mm-hmm. Four other fights, zero takedowns attempted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alex Perez is good for almost three takedowns a fight. Um. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I've seen people like people try to shoot on Manuel Cobb. I've seen it. Like I don't. I don't. They don't. I don't see the high success though. Um, I don't know how many times Pantoja got him down. Uh, Pantoja. He got Pantoja down twice. Pantoja got him down zero times. The only person who took him down. Uh, I have to check for you in a second. Can't think of what his name was, but. I think uh, Nicolau might have took him down. I don't. Yeah, Mateus Nicolau took him down twice. Twice, but I don't think he had much success. Wait, no. And then his uh, David Dvorak took him down two of three times. I think Dvor- Yeah, I think Dvorak did take him down too, but they were like nothing. Um, he got right back up, and um, Dvorak had to work for those takedowns as well, and they were. Um, he didn't get good results after them. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think Alex Perez the way he's looked or he's coming in here and just wrestling the Dickens out of Manel Cop and going to own him on the ground. Uh, and I think Alex Perez, has, mm-hmm. he's fast, though. I mean, he's not a he's not a terrible striker. I mean, he fought for the championship against two years ago um, against Davison. Um, he got guillotined pretty quick. Was that for the title? That wasn't for the title. Yeah, it was. It was for a title. He had a title for it. No. He stepped on a short notice. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think Moreno got hurt. That's supposed to be the Moreno right. thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, it was quick. Uh, oh, yeah, but he just got mangled. Oh, Figueredo stepped in. It was supposed to be Moreno versus Alex Perez, and Figueredo stepped in. I see. And Figueredo was supposed to fight uh, Garbrandt that day. Oh, he had a fight, too. Okay. I see. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Um... Perez wants to finish this fight on the ground. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that against Cop. Cop seems pretty strong. So, I mean, I don't think I have any bets on the fight as of now, but I think Cop wins. Yeah, I think so as well. I think that, um, yeah, I think Alex Perez utilizes his takedowns a lot, but doesn't do a whole ton with them on the ground. I think his striking is pretty good, but I don't think he's going to be able to outstrike Manal Cop. Mm-hmm. I'm also picking Manal Cop. All right. All right. What do we got right, next? Moving on, we got Andy, Andy KGB, KGB Lee and Macy Barber. Um, future Barber. She's got her plans already set out. So she came back off the losses. Um, 
you know, she blew her knee out against Roxanne, lost. Um, came back for a while, lost the decision to Alexa Gross. So, you know, she was she, she showed a lot of ring rust in that that fight. Um, poor decision making. But now she's rebounded. Um, she's got some wins. I don't think she beat Miranda Maverick, but she got the win. You know, she beat she beat Montana like she should, and she beat Jess I. Um, unanimously, you know, I'm not gonna we're not gonna I'm not gonna run to the papers again and say she's she's going to be a champ but she's she's my she's a healthy favorite minus 250 minus 210 i see some on tapology i've seen her minus 250 on books um andrea lee andrea's looked better to me her past three fights um antonina that was a good win for her she was really impressive against cynthia calvillo that was a fight she was heavily underdogged and she beat cynthia's ass um and she also, I think she won a round against Vivi, but she got outstruck. She couldn't, she was overwhelmed by Vivi's speed and volume. Um, she's got a five inch reach advantage against Macy Barber. When I first saw Macy Barber's fights before she blew her knee out, she was like a powerhouse, I thought. Um, she could, she stunned you, she could stun you. Nobody could keep up with her power on the feet. Um, the strikes came fast, they were powerful, or she can get take you down. Um, ground and pound you out of there i haven't seen that same person since coming back um so i don't know which way to lean here i kind of i kind of think there's some value in andrea lee but yeah i don't know what do you think um so she changed her camp a couple times i think she's with team alpha now um, she had been with Rufus Sport. Um, I, I think that she changed her game plan quite a bit. She became much more of a clinch fighter mm -hmm. in these last few fights. Um, and what I heard was that was like her original skill set that kind of set her apart. Was she was really really good in the clinch? Um, yeah, she's very strong. She's powerful. Game. And then she kind of pulled away from that for a little for a little mm -hmm. while. Uh, and I think this transition back into the clinch is going to be a, a good thing for her. Uh, she's got a lot higher level experience than, oh, I guess that's not really true. Andrea Lee's got a little bit better uh, experience than she does in the UFC. Man, like, Andrea Lee never looks good to me. Like, she, just, she wins, but, like, I don't know, man. She beat Veronica Hardy back when she didn't know how to do fighting. Like, mm -hmm. Ashley Evans-Smith, I don't think she's in the UFC anymore. Oh, I guess mm -hmm. she is. Her last, yeah, her last fight was three years ago. I just went to Norman DeMont. Uh, I just... Lauren Murphy, Joanne Wood, and Roxanne Modifier are all good. She's she's fought a lot. She's fought better girls. Yeah. On average than Macy Barber has. Uh, and it kind of shows in the fact that she's five and four in the UFC and Macy's six and two. Um, but like Macy's beat, beat some good girls coming that are like on the way up. Like the depth. Andrea Lee has swept, has swam in a deeper pool. Macy Barber has killed more dangerous sharks. Hmm. So I, I, I That's a new analogy. That. That's a good one. I see a lot more upside with Macy Barber. Uh, I think she should. If Roxanne didn't finish her on the ground, I don't see why Andrea Lee should. And I don't think Andrea Lee finishes people on the feet. I don't think she finishes people anywhere. Um, well, but she is pretty high. She's pretty high volume, um, kickboxing style. Five submissions, yeah. No, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't. She, she's pretty. She's pretty. Oh, she throws that volume. Yeah, huh? her only finish in the UFC is over Anthony Shevchenko. So, uh, yeah, she's not going to be finishing people. She typically ends up grappling a lot. Um, she fought Roxanne twice. Oh yeah, Macy Barber's going to smash Andrea Lee. Oof. Yeah, I'm undecided. Um, I'm undecided. I was. I was like, yeah, what's going to happen? Where he was going to go? But. Let's see. Macy lands four and a half strikes per minute, gets hit two and a half, 
Andrea lands five and a half, gets land, gets hit three and a half. She's high volume. Andrea, yeah, yeah, that's not, and and a lot of those, a lot of those coming from her legs too. She kicks, so I'm wondering oh, yeah. if that's going to stop um, Macy Barber's come forward like approach a little bit. Probably not, mm-hmm. but. Uh, no, the way you deal with kickers is you put them on the back foot. You have to back a kicker up. If you give a kicker range, then they're going to outkick you. Think about the people who have beaten Nets and Barbosa. It's the guys that have stuck in his face. Yeah. Anthony Pettis, the guys who have stuck in his face. People that have given them the space to operate have been decimated. So Macy Barber is going to clinch with Andrea Lee. She will likely not finish Andrea Lee because she's pretty tough. Uh, and Macy's not like a, just not a big finisher. Uh, maybe she will be eventually, but as of now. So this is going to go to decision, definitely Macy Barber. All right, awesome. Uh, Macy Barber it is. Next fight, Nate the Train, Landway, Austin Lights Out, Lingo. I love me some Nate the Train. I love me some Nate the Train. Train. Yeah, he's good. Uh, he's, 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 he's fun to watch. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Austin Lingo style. I like Austin Lingo too. I, I think there's going to be action in this one. Um, both guys are about the same height, same reach. Um, both coming on a two-fight winning streak. Um, Nathan Train's pretty big favorite. He's about minus 300. Um, hmm, Nathan Train was, yeah, he had a really crazy fight against Onama. Um, again, he's just, that was an awesome fight. Um, he surprised everyone against Ludovic Klein, coming as an underdog. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, Nate Train is uh, just fucking... Yeah, he just keeps coming. Um, Austin Lingo. I don't, I don't know how this fight plays out. Um, I can't back Nate the Train at minus three hundred. However, um, I think Nate the Train wins. But as far as betting, I don't see anything that sticks out. I. Uh, what was the line again? Uh, Nate the Train is minus three hundred. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean. Nate the Train loses by finish, or he doesn't lose. Um, he also, you know, he's got a decent number of knockouts. Uh, and Lingo does have a lot of finishes outside of the UFC. Right. But the two guys that finished Nate in the UFC are, like, prolific finishers. Like, Juicy J has 22 finishes to his name and Herbert Burns eight of his 11 victories are by finish all right so they're guys who are like going to finish you or probably aren't going to win type situation um and I, I don't think Austin Lingo is that guy he's been winning a lot of decisions in the UFC outside it's a little different. Like you fight a different level, you di- you fight a different caliber mm-hmm. opposition. And one of the biggest things that keeps people from making it to the UFC is their constitution, their ability to absorb dam- damage, and their willingness to absorb damage. So a lot of guys are there's a lot of people at your local gym who are just as technically savvy as a UFC fighter. There's a few of those guys who are better than the average or even most UFC fighters, but they're just not, they're not durable enough or they're not willing enough to take damage. Nate, Nate the train is ultra durable, mm-hmm. ultra willing to take damage to a deficit. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think Lingo is going to be able to put him out. I think Nate the train should win this pretty convincingly. And if he okay. doesn't, I'll be very impressed with Lingo. I agree. You got Nate. Um, I don't know where to stick him as far as a bet or if there's a bet there, but we'll see later in the week. Uh, co-main event, we got Holly Holm against Yana Santos, formerly Yana Kunitskaya. Um, they're going to fight this at Bantamweight 135. Um, I hate this fight. Yeah, this is a terrible co-main event. Um, I, I actually, the first thing I think, I don't, I'm not sure what weight class Yana fights at normally. 35 primarily. So she's in her natural weight class. Oh yeah, Ketlin yeah. Vieira, Irene Aldana. There's just not many girls, right, in that in that weight class. And Holly, Holly as well. Uh, Pena, Amanda. Okay, Yana Kunitskaya. Uh, yeah, she beat Ketlin with that 
fight where Catelyn did nothing. She beat Sawyer. Joy Starring was not bad. She's usually a game fighter. Um, she beat her. And then I remember she got knocked out. Irene, Irene knocked her out. Aspen Ladd knocked her out. Julia Stoller, Stoliarenko is one in five in the UFC. Yeah. And she lost to a girl like no. Arm bar queen. Yeah, she's no, she's bad. That's not a good fighter. Yeah, she's tough though. She's tough. She's had some tough tough fights. She's had a fuck ton of fights, but she, that's she's not tough. a good fighter. Oh yeah, don't, I'm not saying I'm not saying she's a good fighter. She's just tough. A feather in Yana's cap. Yeah. That's not a feather. No. Nah. <laughs> um yeah I, I don't know what to make of holly home at this point um i mean she's still fighting i don't know how active she's training or what her goals are as far as you know like she's an og on the way out of sport i mean she's almost 42 she's in phenomenal shape and to me age doesn't matter i'm just stating um thing God, i've seen so like in the sky I, I think i feel like holly has i felt I feel like Holly still has a lot more. Holly's movement is really good. Um, Giannis Santos is, is pretty slow, in my opinion. Um, so I feel like Holly can give her all types of problems just skating around and landing landing shots and getting out of there. Um, Kuniskaya tries to wrestle. Okay. Um, I don't know. Holly's pretty strong. So I don't I don't know if she has a big advantage there or she's a wrestler, but I mean, I haven't seen that out of her. Um, she, she doesn't have a fierce, fierce ground game or anything. I don't know. Not betting it yet, but I, I think Holly coasts to a decision win. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's a reasonable expectation. Uh, Holly's really, really good in the clinch. Mm -hmm. um, she's been well trained since she was a child. Um, the issue is I don't think those training methods have changed since she was a child. No. Like, I don't think Winkle John's getting better. I, I don't know how much she works with Greg, ja Greg Nelson, right. Greg Jackson. Um, Jackson retired for a little while, but recently I've seen him come back for a couple of different fighters. So interestingly enough, Holly, who is like super good at defense, coming from a school that typically is pretty good at defense, um, only lands... Almost, she lands less than half a strike more than she gets hit. Uh, Yana lands a, over a full strike more than she gets hit. Um, man. Like, the other thing is Holly's fought all the champions. Holly, Holly's only losses are to, other than Vieira, I think her only losses are to world champions. Amanda Nunes, Chris Cyborg, Jermaine Durandami, Valentina Shevchenko, Misha Tate. Mm. Every one of her losses is to a world champion. Yeah. I mean, even like Irena Aldana, I thought was going to beat her. I thought for sure that was going to go her way. Uh, you see somebody like like Megan Anderson come up, and you're like, "Wow, that girl's that girl's going places." And then Holly just mashes her. So, like, I don't know. Like, what do we... I don't know what to make of this. I've never seen anything out of Santos that impresses me. I guess I have to go with Holly Holm. Mm -hmm. Just for a pick. Yeah. I... But, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those things. Um... The only thing is, Holly's always the main event. Like, why? Nah, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not even upset. I'm just confused. Yeah, like, I think. Why do you have this much star? I could have stuck Andrea Lee as a co main. She's from Texas, I think, at least. Or something. This is in, it's in San Antonio, but this is a, it's a weird, uh, weird co main, uh, non exciting co main. Um, yeah, like, I think I'm already ready to, I, I'm ready to look, look, talk about the main event. Like, I'm already over this. this way. <laughs> Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's main go. Event. All right. This, this is a good one. This is a good one. Come on. We got, we got Corey, the, we have the Sandman is back. Corey Sanhagen, Marlon Chito Vera. I thought Chito was going to get a title shot after his last fight. Eventually, um, hasn't happened yet. I think with a big performance here, though, I think Chito is going to be in line. Um, I don't know how exactly it's. We don't know how it's going to play out. Um, but I mean, Chito has just been devastating lately. Um, 
Tito made a fight fight IQ mistake against Jose Aldo. Um, that was about two years ago. That was his five. So he's active five fights in two years. Um, and it cost him a fight. Um, since then, he's beaten really good. I mean, really good people. David Grant, unanimous decision, which was a really it's, you know, good win. David Grant's tough. Knocked out Frankie. We saw that. Rob Font um, was laying some huge shots against Rob Font. Um, and a striker's delight. And then he knocked out Dom Cruz, who's a really hard guy to finish. Um, uh, I guess the one thing about Cheeto, I will say, is like I don't think he's primarily always the minute winner. He's more of – it seems like he never gets hurt. You can't finish the man, number one. And But it seems like he doesn't even get – his face is always fine. Like he just eats shots. He never gets – Never gets knocked backwards. Never gets stunned. He just keeps coming forward, and no one keeps no one can contend with his power um, as the fight goes on. Um, he's been doing a great job of that. All that um, constantly getting better. San Hagen, known for his height and reach, um, but surprisingly, they have the same reach in this fight. Um, San Hagen is a great striker. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this fight stays on the feet. Um, Dan Hagen last time, yeah, got that KO stoppage, stoppage of uh, Yadong Song, who's underrated. So Yadong Song is very good. I think the thing that sticks out to me is that um, so Corey San Hagen is like minus 180 up to minus 200. He's a favorite. Um, who has he finished? Uh, he finished Marlon Moraes. I mean, Marlon Moraes gets no disrespect because he gets finished a lot lately. He finished Frankie, but that, you know, he finished a different version of Frankie Edgar. Um, you know, uh, that's. Well, great against Dillashaw. Um, very great fight. Um, he got the he got the wrong end of that split decision. Um, Peter Yan knocked him down. Um, he couldn't knock down Peter. Yan, you know Peter Yan. So I don't. And then he stopped Yudong Song. But I kind of question whether if no one's hurt Marlon Vera, I don't think Sanhagen is the guy that's going to hurt him. Does that make sense? Like no one's been able to stop or even hurt Cheeto yet. I don't think Sanhagen has that type power. Um, remember Sanhagen's last fight? I do. I don't recall. I don't recall. I know it was a doctor stoppage. I don't recall the action though. Uh, it was from a cut. Yeah, I got. I know that, but I don't. I don't know. Um, you don't know what caused it. I don't know. I don't remember like how that fight went down. Elbows, elbows. Mm -hmm. So Sanhagen had this moment with Jan where he couldn't back him up. And he went back to he went back in between camps and he said, "What do I do? I don't have if I don't have the ability to knock somebody out and I can't back him up. How do I deal with that pressure?" And his answer was to elbow them because you don't need to knock somebody out if you cut them and they can't see mm -hmm. and takedowns. Mm -hmm. He let me I'm gonna pull up the numbers for you really quick before I lie about him, but he tried an insane amount of takedowns against he went for 14 takedowns against Sonia Dung. Awesome. I don't think he's tried 14 takedowns in the rest of his fights. No, probably not. Right. Um, Cheeto doesn't have great takedown defense. Not even that he couldn't have great takedown defense, but he kind of doesn't mind. Like he's totally fine fighting you there. I bet you if I uh, – yeah, I bet you Sanhagen has about 15 takedown attempts in his other seven UFC fights. So what is he? He's eight and three in the UFC, so 11 UFC fights. He's got as many takedowns in 12 fights as he had in one. Mm. Yeah, from the perspective of big hitter who stays in your face and doesn't get put away, Cheeto and Song Yanong are the same fighter. They approach these things very dramatically differently. I think okay. Song is much more explosive, much more athletic, much more, uh, much bigger motions. But both of these are guys that you're going to struggle to back them up. You're going to struggle to finish them. Uh, I think that I was worried about this going into this. Like, I'm a big fan of Sanhei. But I'm pretty confident that Sanhagen is going to be able to take this away from Chio. Hmm. And if he doesn't, Chio's going to win the title. Like, by the way, if Chio can beat this, can win this one, Chio's going to win a title. 
Because mm. wow. I think I'm gonna see, I want to see Cheeto versus Moran more than I want to see Cheeto versus Aljamain. Yeah. Uh, but like, if he wins this, I would um, like to watch Cheeto versus Marab. <laughs> and if Cheeto meets Marab, Cheeto's the greatest fighter at 135 pounds, even if he never fought again after that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Cheeto is yeah, Cheeto, Cheeto's tough. I agree with that. If he pulls this off, so man, I I I like that Sanhagen made adjustments and he's like, okay, he went for takedowns against uh, Song Yudong Song. I, man, I, I it's just Cheeto's definitely gonna come forward. That's just his style because um, he just doesn't respect your punching power. Um, and why would you if no one can finish or hurt you? Um, so San Diego might okay, he might try to get this fight to the mat. Oh, that makes me I, I agree that Vera is very comfortable when he's on the mat. I think at times his fight IQ, the first round against Frankie, he didn't look to get up. Um it cost him the fight against Jose Aldo, because Aldo took his took his back early in the third round and he just held it the whole time. Um Vera has great defense, as we've seen those like he's he you he trusts that you won't submit him. He tr- he's great defensively, but as far as like keeping getting out of the position, um, where in 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 an MMA fight where it's you know it's a, it's not looked at where you're getting controlled, you're down, you're in someone's you're either someone's in your guard or they have your back. Are you just thinking about the Jose Aldo fight, or are you thinking about a different fight as well? First round against Frank Yeager, too. Um, so oh, even okay. if San Hagen, even if San Hagen gets him down, I don't think San Hagen's good enough on the ground to be that guy that finishes Cheeto. Um, I think if San Hagen goes takedown heavy over five rounds, I think it's going to tire him out, and eventually Cheeto is going to stuff those pretty easy. San Hagen thinks his best skills are on the ground. Yeah, well, you're going to have to show me. <laughs> Show me that you can finish this guy who's also really good on the ground. Um, but he's good defensively, you know, like things. Like I said, I could see San Hagen maybe stealing a round or something. Cheeto does seem like he's lapses a little bit, and it seems like he's not the best in the first round either. Um, I don't think he's won the first round in either of his last three fights, honestly. Three. Davey three Grant is sitting with. He probably won that one. He lost the first round against Aldo for sure. I know he won the second one because I bet that fight. I remember that. Yeah, he's not the quick. Maybe he's not the quickest starter, but no, I think San Diego's going to get tired of that takedown heavy approach, and I think Cheeto's Cheeto might knock him out later round. Hmm. It's five round. He did it for five rounds. Oh no, 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 wait. Yeah, he did it for four. Okay, he did it for four rounds. Okay, how successful? Yeah, that's fine. How successful was he out of 14? Two, but the point wasn't to get him to the floor. The point was to stuff the power and never yeah. let, let him put out. Which he's going to try here. And I, yeah, I don't, this is a different kind of power. I don't know. I don't, I think, you I think Cheeto that. Cheeto's more power than Song Yudong? That Cheeto's more power than Song Yudong? Yeah, of course. I think he has more power. I think he's probably the most, he's one of the most powerful guys out. He's, he's, he's really good. He is really good. If you finish Dom Cruz, you you got power. Dom Cruz is a hard guy to finish. I would agree. I would agree. He's a very hard guy to finish. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think Cheeto wins by finish, but I think it's later rounds. I'm gonna try to find a prop like Cheeto round three, four, five, or finished. I mean, Cheeto by finish will be a good good price. I don't. I'm unsure if Cheeto can win a decision. He probably could, um, but I don't know. I think Cheeto can win this fight with. Uh, I think he can win. He has 10 submission wins. Mm-hmm. Oh, when he got here, he was way better at jiu-jitsu than he was striking, which is weird because he had never done jiu-jitsu. He's not a good decision fighter. He's four and seven in decisions. Yeah, he's not. He's, all of his losses by decision. Uh, yeah, the Aldo fight, I know that he made that mistake. I don't recall the Song Yudong fight. Wow, he is, man, he is active. Oh, my God. Look he at all these fights. Years. Look at all his fights since 2020, man. Yeah, I mean, he's knocking the guys out and finishing them. I don't know. I think Cheeto's a bad man. I don't. I don't think San Hagen's up. San Hagen's a tough dude. He's he's a dog, but I I think he's gonna get a little stunned by when he gets he gets called by Cheeto. I think Cheeto upsets. Cool. I got San Hagen. There you have it. San Hagen by decision. All right. Thank you.
If you've been enjoying our content, please remember to tell a friend to tell a friend. Professor Violence making you fat stacks of cash. That and guy, you sleep with Sharp is teaching how to get the proper. Don't sleep. This time and every time. Thank you for being Hit the button. Hit the button. Subscribe.